What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, if you want to get your first taste of iOS 10, and I know there's a lot of you, the public beta is available now. You can get access by signing up for Apple's beta software program online for free, but I will warn you to put it on a secondary device because not all your apps may work the same way, you know, because it's a beta. But not everyone really cares about that. They just want the new stuff. Now, Apple's also seeded the second developer beta for iOS 10, tvOS, watchOS Trace, and... <sighs> My name is Marcos Sierra. I did that for you. iOS Beta 2 gets a few new tweaks like handling your widgets that you can access at any time with a swipe from the notifications, new 3D touch options in the control center for the flashlight and timer, and your medical ID has the option for organ donation. So I could give my heart to you. Aww. It also looks like the voicemail transcription feature is starting to roll out. The actual feature is still in beta itself, but you can tap on an individual voicemail and voila, the transcription is there. Pretty sweet. Also, I could go on and on about watchOS 3 and you know it's completely changed about how I feel about the Apple Watch because I'm wearing it almost every day. Now we've talked about what makes it different, but one of the new app additions is called Breathe. This isn't a throwaway app, and it's actually useful for simple deep breathing exercises that can help you relax your body and quiet your mind. I've used it, and it's really a nice feature to have. Plus, you can even set reminders to take in a deep breath. That still wants to make me throw up in my mouth. You can adjust how often the Breathe app reminds you, but even after all that, I still love Watch OS 3. All right, a report from Digitimes claims Apple may switch to micro LED displays for the Apple Watch in the second half of 2017 at the earliest, moving away from the current OLED screens. The timeline would suggest OLED screens would still be around for the Apple Watch 2, and micro LED panels would be ready for the Apple Watch 3. Micro LED displays are thinner and lighter, with an improved color gamut, increased brightness, and higher resolutions, all good things. They do not require backlighting, but are reportedly more difficult and expensive to mass produce. And in the latest iPhone news and rumors, the latest CAD renders from Nowhere Else FR continue to show the larger 5.5-inch phone with an opening to support a dual-lens camera and a 4.7-inch model with a larger camera cutout for a single lens. And again, the design reinforces a lightning port with dual speakers at the base with no headphone jack. But if you're still disgusted over Apple's insistence to have an entry-level iPhone with 16 gigs, a Wall Street Journal report has squashed that, claiming the iPhone 7 or whatever they call it will finally come with 32 gigs of storage in the base model. You know, I won't believe it until I actually see it. Plus, Nintendo has decided to wake up and will invest in physical controllers for smartphones and tablets at least five years later than they should have. I've ripped Nintendo for years for being so stubborn instead of just at the very least releasing $5 to $10 versions of their classics on mobile devices. You know everyone would still buy them. They'll also release five new mobile titles by March again, at least five years later than they should have. Sorry, no bad apples here. This is just straight embarrassing how late to the party they are. But they might have completely redeemed themselves with the release of Pokemon Go in New Zealand, Australia, and a rollout to some US markets. You basically use your smartphone camera and GPS to create an augmented reality, or what I'd rather call real life, where you can capture, collect, trade, and battle Pokemon. Now for someone who regularly loses to his seven-year-old and four-year-old nephews at the card game, this is my chance for revenge. Jake and Tyler, you hear me, Jake Tong and Tyler Tong. You are going down. I'm going to kick your butts. Uh. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. I even got this nice sketch from Gabriel Satelli of an iPhone sketch he did in 1991. Call back to last week's show. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.